But uh, what we're going to go over tonight is our uh, is our general fund budget, and we're going to present by program. And I was kind of unique. Uh, a lot of states don't do it by program; they just have their budget. Um, but here we've got four programs: public safety, which is made up of uh, police, animal control, fire ambulance, and building inspection. Cultural recreation is library, park and rec, cemetery, pool. Community and economic development is really partnership with TIF funds and developments, and then just general governance, city hall administration. Um, we did prepare kind of a, you got kind of a line item, and we can kind of run through that a little bit and talk about some of the uh, changes and highlights if you like. We also have uh, at the back of your packet, you should have a sheet like this. So we'll give you kind of a breakdown of revenue and expenses. And then how we kind of where we're at right now, and how we kind of get the general fund balance. Um, I will note that all the numbers that um, you see on the expense side tonight, those are the numbers that were um, requested by the departments. Uh, administration has not changed those. Um, the one thing that I know on the ambulance side, I, I would note that. Um, we put in for the aim of the salaries, it was for the 200 hours per week, was the last that we had. So that's what will be reflected when we get there. Um, Adam Lee, do you want to talk? Do you want to say about the revenues at all? Or? They are what they are. <laughs> I mean, they're just the property taxes and make up to each department if they have an opportunity to create some type of a service that they can collect a fee on. Um, for the police department, that makeup there is um, not only the local options of tax controversy when we get into the budget, but their vehicle inspections. Um, they're going to start utilizing their GTSB, their grant safety traffic bureau funds. Um, so that grant can be built in because it's a working, it's a reimbursement for hours worked. Um, so for the rest of them, again, like for example, with the library, the library, and Allie can explain in a little bit more detail, she's able to uh, leverage funds from the county and um, from the school district communities. Um, so that's kind of a combination of first. And then um, when it comes to the park recreation pool, again, they provide uh, services uh, that we can collect revenues for, such as field rentals, pool admissions, um, shelter rentals, um, and uh, with the Youth Saver Sport, um, again, collecting recreational fees for those uh, programs. Uh, the cemetery, of course, those revenues come from, mostly come from cemetery sales of the columbarium um, and the spaces. In financial administration, yep, we don't we don't get to charge anybody to talk to us. So <laughs> that's unless you have any other questions, that's just a brief one. And you'll kind of see when you're going through the line items with revenues are on top. Yeah. Um, and line items, for example. The general fund line items include property taxes and then your licensure permits, your building uh, permitting. A little bit of interest in yeah. um, franchise fees. Um, one thing you'll notice is we did out, out, allocate the revenues this time. We received the other half of the ARPA funds. So you'll see the $261,000 of the new governmental uh, grant on that revenue side. Um, a little bit for just some miscellaneous things. I guess we would down like to PD. Uh, if you look at their revenue, I think we talked about the revenues that they uh, reflect probably you know, the biggest thing they got is probably the uh, vehicle the inspections or, or examinations. Uh, we did lower that just a little bit. Um, this year, most of their revenue, I think, stayed fairly consistent as you look across over the last two years. You'll see you've got actual revenues. You see it on the expense side too. You've got actual revenues and expenses from 
2019, 2020, 2020, 2021. You've got our current and then what's proposed. So, um, <clears throat> You know, just cutting to the chase, you know, based on some of the things that the police can uh, bring fees in for, you know, we're projecting a, a little over $100,000 to assist um, with their expenses. <clears throat> on the fire side, um, the only thing that we're showing, um, we just dropped in a number, and again, it's just pure and speculative guess. Uh, we don't want to be short to where we have to amend the budget. There's potential there for forty thousand dollars potentially for rural, um, depending on how the budget shakes out for fire. On the ambulance side, uh, their revenues are charged for service. And the last couple of years, um, we have gone back, and they're averaging right around that two seventeen to twenty. So we put two hundred seventeen thousand as projected revenue. That's on page four of your sheet. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to stop me. I'm just going to kind of get some of the highlights. Um, so you can see for, for public safety, you know, there's a revenue of about 350, a little over $357,000. Um, roadway maintenance is really not much there. For the street side, we really don't spend much out of there other than doing some sidewalk work. Um, we'll get into culture and recreation on the library side. Um, they've got their um, half of the third. I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. uh, the local auction sales, which, which we're projecting about 90000 Then they've got their fees. They've got their county um, library allocation. They've got their uh, local community library allocation. Um, I think yeah, I got just a little bit more from the county this year. It wasn't a huge amount. It was a little bit more um, this year than the past. Mm -hmm. um, so on the library mm -hmm. side, they're looking you know, some, and there's a transfer in and that 50. Thousand uh, dollar transfer in is coming from their um, reserve, reserve from the, the trust. From the trust, uh, they had some grant funds for some money. Some money they were seeing able to spend it. those dollars will be used to uh, pay for the project uh, that you'll see before you next week. Um, I think the library board met last mm -hmm. night, last night yep. and, and they've got a recommendation that, that you'll see next Tuesday for for their project. Um, we, and in the budget amendment, you'll see we did, or we did the budget amendment for the whole project cost for this year at 100000 The project's about time to get started. It's probably going to carry into two, two fiscal years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's supposed to be done by September, so we prepared to half those dollars and just have, you know, by, by the end of June, the other half will probably show up, and you'll see that um, later. That's why you see the $50,000 transfer on the revenue side there. Um, what page are you on? That's on page seven. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm just kind of flipping pages and not being real specific. My apologies. That's right. But the total library, we're, you know, we're estimating around 165000 um, of additional revenue aside from property taxes. Um, then down from that, you got parks. They, they get the other um, half of a third of the local options. So there's 90000 there. Um, Nick has a little bit of money. Um, just some miscellaneous stuff, um, like shelter grants on the park side when you get into recreation. Down on that same page, um, he's got some activity fees and, and, and summer camp fees. So we're estimating around 10. Um, page 8, um, there's, that's about it from the park and the rec side. You see the cemetery. Um, we put in $6,000 of potential revenue if you look at the past history. Um, it's ranged from 3,500 to 6,900, or a little over 8,900 this year. And we think part of that's due to the sale of the calabariums. Mm -hmm. And with the addition of those other calabariums coming, that could go up. But we decided to just keep that revenue somewhat um, as neutral, just trying to keep it close. If, if it goes up, great. Um, on the pool side, you'll see the charges there for the pool, on the passes on the bottom of that same page on eight. Uh, along with their concession. So total culture and, and recreation, you know, between those, it's just a little over three hundred thousand uh, dollars per projected in revenues. Um, like we said in general government, there's really um, not much there um, for us. So you can see uh, from what we're looking at, and this will match up with 
or the bottom of page nine where we'll, we'll match up with this sheet that you've got and see that the, the requested revenue that we're budgeting for is 2,579,000. 853 of that matches up with um, that sheet that you've got. Next, we'll move on into expenditures. If everybody's ready, if you have any questions on revenues, we have a leader I can answer. For the ARPA funds, is that not applicable because it's this year? Or where are this, this, this anywhere? It's not built in for expansion mm -hmm. because we have decided all, all we're showing is we're going to receive the second half of, of those revenues. Okay. And since we don't have where we're going to spend it, I mean, once we you know, make that decision, and we have, I think we have to make that decision by 2024, mm -hmm. and they have to extend by 2026. So okay. um, we just showed that the revenue is coming in, but we have not allocated an expense for that yet. We have met with um, the finance committee to talk mm -hmm. about some of the things that um, have been requested. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And that's not a mainstay either of income. Yeah, All right. It's just a, yeah, the it's just a one thing. One thing. Yeah, it's just a one time deal. So this I mean, is kind of like the recurring. We've got the 261000 that, uh, that the city received last year. Right. right. That it's in the current budget that, that hasn't been allocated for expense either. So those dollars will be earmarked uh, right. for whatever use the city decides to. Well, I, I just mentioned that because most of everything we're reviewing is uh, pretty much what is mainstay, like what is consistent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty much consistent revenues. And, you know, really when you look at city budgets, and, and after doing this for 35 years, 70, 80, 90% of your budget really never changes because it's your personnel costs and the fee picks. I mean, really the things that you've got some discussion on are capital purchases, projects. Those are the sorts of things where, you know, council has a little more say in you know, hey, this project or buy this piece of equipment or you know, do this or that. So, yeah. so we'll jump into um, police department. Um, we put together all uh, personal services, which are the wages and employee benefits. Uh, I sit down with Eric and talk about his staff development. And this is on, on page 10. Um, we've stayed, I think Eric stayed pretty consistent um, throughout the work. I mean, other than the wages showing up, most of this stuff kind of remained the same. Um, the one, one thing that you'll note, yes, we didn't increase the contract services that we were talking about. That's not reflected on this. It's still okay. at 1500. We talked about it being probably like 7500. And then right. depending on the taser, that, that would increase it more. Oh, for this year, we were going to do a budget amendment. We're, on we're, that. We talked about doing. If you're talking about taser stuff, we we want that without not considering taser. That's for police legal science shield, and that was on the sheet. Like the whole all that stuff. Okay, so that should be on that sheet that I had mm -hmm. when I met with Eric. So I have to add that in. It should probably be seventy five hundred instead of fifteen. Instead of fifteen hundred. Okay. Yeah. Nope, I didn't understand that. I, and I know there's a, I know there's a sheet that backs that up, and I missed it. So my apologies, Eric. Um, the one thing that we did, we budgeted in capital improvements. One thing she'd like to do is uh, get, get a new vehicle, and we're probably looking at a, an SUV um, in that price range for, for the $35,000. Um, I don't know. We've asked them to start looking to see through state debt if they can even get something ordered that would fall into early next fiscal year or not, or at least have to wait a little bit longer. Right? And that's really the only capital purchase. Um, is that enough though? 35,000? Mm -hmm. well. No, right now, right now the, cheapest, the cheapest state bid vehicle that is a, it's a sedan and it's like 24999 just to a car. Yeah. And that would include any equipment inside. It. So mm -hmm. if we went to something like an SUV that'll get around better in the winter, mm -hmm. that increases the cost. And then that it's bigger, so you need bigger things to go in it, yeah. lights and the cages and everything. So I, that's why I'm saying I didn't think 35 was enough. Like maybe it should be more. And it might, I haven't gotten that far in it in terms oh, of yeah. the last one that I bought was in the 30, 31 range. Oh, okay. Uh, so, I mean, the state bid price will usually give you I mean, if a you better look, deal. Oh, it's, it's a lot better deal. Oh, yeah. You or I go into the shop because the state 
with as many vehicles as they purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they send their contracts out to vendors all across the state. They come in and they gotcha. choose those. So, yeah, we typically, as municipality, can buy those quite a bit cheaper than your average citizens. Good. Um, so you can kind of see the total for the East Department is projected at a little over $650,000. Um, we'll move down into the fire department, and I uh, met with uh, Chief Sickles and Assistant Chief Christensen, and, and we kind of went through their budget. Um, I shared, you know, the two-year history, and, and we kind of looked at that, and I think all of these numbers um, go over the same numbers that um, you and I and Chief had kind of talked about for um, like your user memberships, training conferences, uh, equipment repairs. Um, we put some money in, for, we kind of agreed on some dollars for the minor equipment and operating supplies. And then what we did on the capital improvement, um, we looked at, uh, they wanted to be able to purchase their, their, their rescue gator this year. Mm -hmm. And there's a trailer that's factored in there that, that could be donated, but we put in the cost of what that trailer might be, as well as two sets of bunker gear, kind of what uh, the three of us kind of put in for that 55,000. Um, and we did, and I guess we'll talk about this as we get towards the end on this last page. Um, so we've got like a budget of 159, 100 for the fire. Can I see the chief stipend is still in there? Yep. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because that is a part of our, um, I can't tell you the exact answer on it. It was something that was approved originally with the chief's position. Um, so I leave it in there until I'm told by council to take it out. Okay, we're going to address it later. Yeah. And we and have. And I talked to Ken Morrison, and Ken was going to try to get me something. He said, that it was created back in before 2009. He said that he remembered that they had that discussion um, to create the stipend for the chief's position okay. for administrative time um, to help, you know, give them some additional hour or additional money towards that. Okay, that's fine. Any other questions on anything on the fire side? And tell, tell me if I missed anything. I mean, does that all look like everything that you and I heard talked about? I think so. I mean, those are the, I took the numbers that, that we wrote down at the table that day, and that's why I provided yeah. you. So if, if, if you see something, please let us know. But I think that's pretty accurate to our discussion. Um, so I have all the notes from the department heads. Yeah, yeah so we, we so. have all that stuff. Okay. So something that's like right, we can double check. Right. Uh, moving on to ambulance, like I said, uh, we took the um, 200 hours, which was the last request. Um, we had gotten, when we went to the 120, we'd gotten a note saying that they really wanted, I think, 240, but they could live 200. So we put the 200 in just to show you what would happen. And then as we looked down through like the training and conferences and all that kind of stuff, again, all of those costs for staff development. Repairs, utilities, uh, contractual services on page 13, and commodities on page uh, 14. Those were all um, items that uh, Chief and Assistant Chief felt needed to be there. So those are the numbers we talked about. Any other So 503000 for the year. 503000 a little over 503000 for the year. Um, animal control is a small, it's, there's not a lot there. There's a little bit of money for some, some time for the staff person that does that, and a little bit of maintenance and some operating supplies. It's, it's fairly minor, it's, the whole thing's a little over $6,000 um, to run our animal control. Um, public works is, is pretty minor as well. There's some dollars that are put in there, uh, mainly for sidewalk work. Uh, we got 6,500 budgeted next year. Um, those dollars uh, will be used um, for sidewalks around town. I think we've discussed later that they'll be used um, for when we do the work downtown. It's delayed a year. Uh, the city portion would, would come out of those funds as well. 
So there's not a lot there, there's 6,500. Um, any questions on any of those two minor funds? If not, we'll move into the library. Uh, you can see their, their costs for the personnel and for the benefits. And again, I sat with Allie and uh, we kind of went through her numbers, um, make sure that what was in there was reflective of what she wanted to see. Uh, kind of going down through, I think on the capital improvement side, there was some sidewalk repair alley and mm -hmm. roof repair, I think, mm -hmm. is what you've got budget for that $27,000. Yes. And you won't see the project in their general operating that will actually have a project fund that will be set up mm -hmm. um, that you'll see later, not tonight, but later in our next budget presentation showing that project. So for a library, we're looking at a total of a little over $410,000 as requested. Moving on to parks, um, it's got several pieces of the park and rec, the cemetery, the pool, kind of fit in all of his stuff. Uh, on his park side, uh, his wages and his benefits. It's got a little bit for staff development. Um, the building and ground maintenance, Nick, remind me, we bumped that up, that was some trees, right? Yeah. Okay, that's what I was thinking you were going to have more trees. That's trees for planted for the parks. Uh, right away. To and I was replace ash trees. So. And, uh, and then next, um, if you get back to the capital outlay, uh, we've got 30,000 uh, budgeted for, I believe it's a new pickup yep. uh, for next department. And then I want to let Nick uh, talk a little bit about capital improvements. It's $160,000 we've got in there, and that's for some work that uh, Nick wants to do at Watson Park. And I'll let Nick kind of explain that in just uh, I would like to. Completely tear out the Wasi basketball courts and uh, volleyball courts and put in the, the mini pitch. It's a basically small size soccer uh, court. And then there would be a new basketball court, full length, um, and a new volleyball court as well. Uh, there would be lighting, new lighting. We are currently, there's currently no lighting on that sports anymore due to the, they're so outdated that we cannot get any more of them. They were the ones that were on the North Diamond that we took out a long time ago, or I think three years ago. Uh, so there will not be any lighting until uh, we do anything like that. Um, so we have to do uh, concrete in there and then <clears throat> Moscow lighting would do the the main pitch is where it comes from. Uh, I had it at the strategic planning meeting, and I wrote, I have uh, submitted a grant to Ryan Trust for forty thousand for that. And whether we get it or not, it's like you know, that's you know, we'll see if we can towards that project. So if you get the grant, it would come off the one sixty, mm -hmm. or the one sixty from the city is in addition to the grant. Um, <clears throat> we we'll go either way. Do it, you know, or we because I. I I'm going to tell you right now, the quote for concrete could be Or we can put in a dog park. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just to be have a little extra money here and there you know, to be safe. Nick doesn't want to have to mow over poop. I get it. <laughs> and, and I will say that the volleyball um, lighting is one of the reasons that volleyball has started happening at the library. So. <laughs> I don't want them to, play, to break my perfect world windows. Oh my God. So, and Watson needs an upgrade for some type uh, for that side of town. I believe it will be uh, very popular. It's been uh, something that's been asked for a long, long time. The kind of hard surface soccer, it's it kind of helps with fundamentals for little kids, and then adults will still be able to utilize it. It's a, it's a fast paced game. Uh, there and you know they're, they already play. They they'll take over a basketball court right now. Mm -hmm. Just thirty people, and they stick water bottles in the fence to make goals. Like mm -hmm. it's just a faster paced game on a concrete uh, surface. Mm -hmm. And that and must go put a special surface over top of the concrete for that. I feel like we had a conversation about pickleball mm -hmm. that we have. Was that? Am I making that up? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> that's just a thing that was. No, um, lots of that guys talk about in the long run. Spending for the it is. It's, it's in the masters. Okay, so that that's, that's, that's more sure. of location. It's mm-hmm. where you got to go. We've got four years. I know our, our <clears throat> players don't would no, would rather be at like that area um, yeah. than Lossy or you know, somewhere else. They, they, they play out there right now on one of the courts that we converted. Um, but at some point, you need to probably uh, and, set them on, pick them all. And area. I know, Nick, I remember. So we created an ordinance for park set aside. So, for example, the new developments that go out um, adjacent to Dutton, um, depending on what that development has for um, within park, they have to either um, provide funds or donate the space. So if there's an opportunity for them to donate the additional funds, then that might be something that, you know, because of the area of what's requested out there that they can Something such as that. So. I don't even know what pickleball is. So. <laughs> Tennis, badminton. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, okay. I watched videos after. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's very <laughs> fast. <laughs> yeah. Go down to Kansas City and go to Chicken or Pickle. You can even play pickleball. So. Wow. Well, it's becoming a problem. It's very fun. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, so that kind of covers. Um, the park side, so the total park is about 350, and then you jump down to the rec side. Um, you got uh, the ways for the rec side. Um, the majority of the money, other than the um, wages and, and venues, are, are going for your recreational activities and some for leases, and equipment supplies, and then summer activity supplies. So uh, they're looking at about $111,000 uh, for the recreation. Piece, and that's on page 21. Um, and then Nick also has the cemetery, which gets on page 22. Um, there's uh, the wages and the venues there. There's some ground maintenance. Uh, he's got, he, he bumped up, I think he doubled his tree maintenance because he's got more trees out there than the, yeah. this year. So we kind of doubled that from five to $10,000. Um, again, you've got some commodities, lighter equipment, and gas and oil. It's just all that day to day stuff um, to take care of the cemetery. And uh, we're looking overall about $77,000 um, on the cemetery side. Jumping into pool on page 23. Um, again, personal services or staff development. Um, we get into repairs and maintenance, equipment repairs and maintenance, those sorts of things on the day to day. The big thing that we've got here is, and Nick and I have talked about this, he's, he's got a look for operating supplies, but um, this fall when the pool is drained, it really has to be sandblasted and painted in. Yes. And what's there, what, is there any additional work? So we are, since we didn't open in 2020, we kind of were able to get an extra year out of our pain. Uh, typically, five to eight years or five to seven years is the range. Year eight, so it'll be year. So we would be at end of this school season. It'll be year eight of that, and this is where the discussion has to start of what are we going to do with the ninety-two-year-old pool eventually? Because this would be your last time painting. Until you did, and this is where you start in five years. You have to start planning for it's, what's next. You have plans, you have drawings, or whatever you're doing. I honestly do not care if you want to throw a stick of dynamite, throw it in there. You want to revamp it, whatever. That's but it has to start because the the upgrade, the things that we have to fix right now is ridiculous price wise from the state, from our inspection. Like our slide area has to be completely redone because the piping is. It sits outside the entire year, and it's starting to where the the connections are. They're, they're, they're coming apart, and it leaks really, really bad, and we got rid of for that. And then our baby pool right now is where we have found most of our leaks, and whether we get that done or not, that's 20 some thousand dollars just for recocking all the cracks that have been resealed, recocked over the last 
50 years or whatever it has been. So the, the, the hope is that uh, this is kind of the last time we're doing this major maintenance that needs to be done. Uh, will give us time to, once they get their master plan uh, brought in and adopted. And I know that was one of the discussion points with either a new aquatic center or, or something to take a look at. Um, I think there's a idea to turn about splash pads and things. So, you know, I think there's some things in the future, but this is something we're going to have to do to carry us forward for a few more years. So. Hopefully, this will be your last big band aid. Mm -hmm. And then it was for like $50,000 or more, isn't it? Or just where the, is it? Just the paint pool is. Yeah. That's why, yeah. It's a big band aid. Yeah. So I'll do it in turn. <laughs> 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 I'll do it in turn. I'll do it in turn. I'll do it in turn. I'll do it in So do you get the bottom the, to the total cultural and recreation year just under $1.2 million dollars in, in expenses. Um, moving on into page 25, begins with the financial administration. And we got some of the, the costs allocated for administration and benefits, um, some dues and memberships, a little bit of building maintenance, audit fees, um, the liability insurance is probably the big piece there is the tort liability. Um, it is uh, 30000 And then um, the economic development contribution. Um, of the 170, which is made up of uh, the grants, and then the money goes to we make grants. So, and that would be the hundred thousand uh, dollars. And then you have 53, and then, there's, there's, and then there's some additional in there because um, we levy for um, professional fees like with Dan's uh, doing agreements and, um, and engineer fees or costs. And we, need it. and we don't have anything in capital on right now. Oh, for administration, for the administration, they're about $311,000. So kind of takes you to do it. Another water me. <laughs> Only because I'm not stupid. Oh, no. But he's got to get back. Yeah. I'm probably going to go here. More to me. Probably. I thought you said quarantine at first, and then when I remember that when I heard quarantine, slow burn. <laughs> so then if you look down at the bottom, um, for the total request, we're just under three million, we're two million nine hundred ninety-two thousand five twenty-three. So when you look at that um, page that the lady put together that has the red, uh, it has kind of the highlights of the revenues and the expenses, and then there's some notes. Um, again, the expenses are projected at two nine, a little over two, just under two point three million. Our uh, revenues are about two, almost two six. So as we look at this, we to try to look to, to balance things out. Um, we started with a negative um, of about four hundred twelve thousand. We have to back out that two hundred and sixty one thousand because we haven't allocated that yet on the revenue or on the expense side. Mm -hmm. So that puts our difference at six hundred seventy three thousand six seventy. Um, what we're recommending is that uh, for next two big projects, um, for the pool and, and for the park, as you recall from talking to the auditor, we have those um, debt service funds that are sending them if they want us to spend down, I believe it's around 950000 roughly. So, we're, so what we're recommending is we take three hundred and five from the debt service to cover those because those would be items that could be covered through the debt service that we could um, bond for. Um, Fire equipment, and I talked to Tom ahead of time because I know they're really looking to try to get some donations. Balance the budget, we have to show a transfer of 55000 out of their uh, fire, um, like it's that, like that fire is... trust nation because they had some money yeah. set aside yeah. for the building yeah. thing. Now, their plan is to 
have a couple of potential fundraisers that could help offset the cost of that. Mm -hmm. um, so when they, after they have their fundraisers and they're, they're ready to buy that piece of equipment or those pieces of equipment, we, we would look to see what was donated or, or what came in donations that would be used. And then we would only transfer what was actually needed to finish paying for that expense. So if they don't raise anything, they buy it, hoping that 55 covers everything. They raised twenty or thirty thousand. You know, maybe we're only transferring less um, from their bottom line out of their trusted agency account. On the ambulance reserve, and I just I, would, I just wanted to ask. So, um, just so we have it noted, is just some um, correspondence to where we want to um, set up the transfer from. So that way we balance the budget. But just like Dave said, I can put a note in there saying, you know, transfer pending fundraiser grant um, to the revenue. And so that way we know if I'm not here, the transfer doesn't happen if we've been able to uh, fundraise or grant the and, dollars. And I'm assuming that your fire reserve is what you're using, saving up for trucks and things. Because you've got a fire reserve and you've got your fire trust agency, which is like where your donations and things are going. Yeah. So and I think in talking to Chief, he, <laughs> if they don't get enough donations, I think they want to take it out of the trust and agency account, which has. Been. I can't remember what he said for sure. You can think that. I mean, right. you know, we can figure out. You know, yeah. you have to transfer. You know, you know, when you do buy it, but before we make that transfer, mm -hmm. you guys can decide which fund that you want to transfer based on it. There's a need to even make the transfer. Okay. Depending on your deal. Because the trust and agency is where the memorial dollars go to, so. And I think if I remember right, you folks have talked about the memorial money. Um, there was the memorial money yeah. set in there for the ones that were in March. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. So that's why I thought more than likely, if you yeah. want, you, you get, get enough donations on your next couple of fundraisers, that's probably where you would pull it from. But we're just showing that there would be some sort of a yeah. transfer from one of your deals. Um, looking at the ambulance side, um, what page are we on? I'm just looking at this, this page. Here. Oh, so we're kind of walking down through. As you recall, um, the ambulance budget was a little over 500 and 503. <laughs> and they take them 217,000, um, is kind of what they've been getting um, on their collections. Uh, and one of the things that uh, at the ambulance board meeting, they wanted to use their reserves to um, fund the additional hours. So what we're showing is to do that, we would have to pull out. And this is it. This budget was 100%. You only got 217000 and you spent every dime of that 500000 You would have to transfer out of the ambulance reserve $286,429 to balance out. I would note that the ambulance reserve, it has 667,000, but only 292,000 of that is actual cash. So if you pull that cash out by agreeing to 200 hours, you potentially could drop your cash down to like, you know, six or $7,000. There still is a $375,000 investment. And when does that mean? I don't have that for two years. You know, there are so much terms. So, but typically with those, I mean, the interest is so minimal because of the investments or very minimal certificates. I mean, if they, I, I believe it would take years, years to work your mark towards yeah, yeah. Um, their equipment, but I didn't, we didn't put anything other than just, I think it makes up three certificate of deposits, if I remember right. And I, and I believe this is, or the image reserve is where we also, I believe, rural and the city contribute $20,000 a year to that reserve fund for equipment. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's and, the value of as well. And just, um, we also ask to uh, just clarify, so the, the situation with, so ambulance has, you know, we know they have a lot of calls. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, what happens is the time to collect, meaning the insurance companies, the payments. Mm -hmm. So on average, we are receiving 217,000 a year because that's what's that being collected at. But then you have that aging balance that I think it runs around 150,000. The thing of it is, it's 
And that and that's what Chief had, had sent me in and yeah. said, hey, there's like 143,000 here. Mm -hmm. But that ranged from 30 days to 121 plus. Mm -hmm. So basically uncollected debt. Correct? Well, and what you'll find though is if you take payments for Medicare, Medicaid, and different things, they're going to pay a set amount. You, you may charge a thousand, they're going to pay you 600 mm -hmm. or whatever it is. That's all you get. So you're basically have to write them that stuff off. We also had, I believe you said, 18 accounts where um, when they provided the service, they did not collect social security numbers. Without a social security number, we have nobody to bill. That's mm -hmm. money that's just, if you transported those people mm -hmm. and you didn't collect a social security number, you're basically writing that. Yeah, six hundred fifty thousand dollars. We, off. we can't always get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and, and we're not saying that you can't get more. No. But we just you're just trying to get the reality out that there are dollars there that we're never going to collect. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's built, and it, it, that's just the way it is. But so. well, I know the too. decisions have been made on the Fund America stuff, but yep. you know, if possible, that could really help offset mm -hmm. um, that two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars or so. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so then that kind of that kind of left us with a negative balance yet to balance out the general fund of twenty seven thousand, and we was recommending to transfer um, some additional local option sales tax for, for the tax relief to cover that. Now that number will go up slightly with, with the mess of the mess of chiefs additional money for me. Thirty four seven forty one. I have dyslexia, so this is fine. Do you want me to talk about the taser <laughs> stuff now? Um, that's actually that's something that we're going to try to do within this budget, but you can certainly talk about it. Okay. Um, so, one one thing we're going to try to do this before the end of June. So. One thing that uh, when I got here and I was doing inventory to figure out what would happen, what we need, what I realized is that we have two working tasers for the entire department. We have only three cartridges that are usable for, to be deployed. Our body cameras are two generations old. Our car, squad car cameras are so old that the company doesn't even make the software for it, and the software only exists on one computer. So we can't even replicate it, and Nick has tried. We can't even replicate it to get it on a separate computer. So if that computer dies, we have no way to do anything with squad car cameras. Um, we have done a test evaluation of two different companies. Uh, we did a full evaluation with Wolfcom, and then I went to Taser, we need a Taser anyway. Um, we got a quote for Tasers and body cameras, and we got a quote for their fleet cameras, so in-car systems. Um, I didn't realize that they do it this way, but it almost works sort of like a lease in that they give us all the equipment, we pay them yearly, and they will give us Tasers, body cameras, holsters, cartridges, training cartridges, they'll install all the stuff in their cars, and then they get periodic updates during the five year term. Mm -hmm. um, for the tasers and the body cameras, it's a fee per officer per month. And what that equals out to, and they want a five year contract. They want a five year contract for their cars as well. The one benefit to it is all of the camera systems. So the cameras on the tasers, the body cameras, the squad car cameras also goes into one place, and they're all connected together. For the tasers and the body cameras, for the five-year term, it's $59,090.06. For the car cameras, if we got every bell and whistle, which I don't necessarily think we need, but if we could get everything that they offer, for the five-year term is $49,919.99. Total, not per year. That's, that's total, total for a five-year contract. Okay. So if we bought out a five-year contract, that's what it is. So that's a total for both. Of one hundred nine thousand ten dollars and five cents. So it's like twenty grand a year. Yeah, like twenty one eight oh two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and what we looked at is um, just doing the outright purchase again with some of those dollars that are setting in debt service. Mm -hmm. It's just buying it. We don't have to worry about. It. If you go through the lease and you got to go through a public hearing and you got to do a whole bunch of things. And, and then I would have to levy it. And you got to levy for it each year. Mm -hmm. and, and when, this is, we, we, we think again that this is a good investment and something that's, that's needed. And like Eric said, I think if it was in like in 30 months, you got new 
tasers and that item to do it. It's like whatever the lifetime of it is, they do half of that and get a new one. So the lifetime of the taser is two and a half years. At the two and a half year mark, they get you a new one, and then the five year mark, you get a new one. For the body cameras, it's a different time frame, but they will periodically update it for this speed. As part of the lease. As yeah. part of that lease. It's it no kind of like but it is, it is our stuff. It's just that we pay them for the updates for the equipment. We pay them if we ever used a taser, the cartridge is expended, they send us a brand new one. Mm -hmm. They bring, send us all the holsters. It's all like it's all included. They give us all. So at the end of it, we can re up, but we've already got the equipment. It's still the, it's a rotating thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Is there an industry standard with how often you should be replacing these things or best practice? Or That's taser is taser. Mm -hmm. T -t taser yes. has them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, they have their recommendations, and that's why they do their lease or oh, this program. Right. The way they do it is so you're getting the update before it reaches its lifespan. And if we were to purchase it, is there any like value in that, like like purchasing versus leasing a car, right? At least at the end. It's and it's all our stuff, and they actually taser. There's a company that refurbishes tasers. Mm -hmm. That taser is actually currently suing, so they actually are asking that we sell our things back to taser when we're done with them, mm -hmm. so, so the company can't go. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna get some benefit out of all the old tasers. We have a ton of old tasers that are just. There's no batteries, so they're dead. Mm -hmm. um, so we can sell those all back. It's not going to be a ton of money, but it's something. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with these. We can, if we keep doing this agreement, we keep getting new equipment. It's never going to go out of service. We're going to get the newest. It's going to be. You're we're going to be. Covered. Yeah, we're going to be upper. Well, we have to <laughs> levy every. Yeah. Year. So well, if if, if I mean, that happened for five years, yeah. then we would. You know, we might have to look at doing the lease. Mm -hmm. Purchase, even though I think it's no interest lease, as I recall. I would just, you know, we would just add levy, you know, whatever that amount is each year for the next five years. But, you know, this first go around, we felt like we had those dollars that needed to be brought down, and this would be a good way to use some of those dollars as well. So, like between Nick and the Chief, um, 305, and, you know, we're Four hundred fifteen thousand of the nine fifty. That's the debt. Service. There's like nine fifty of the debt service that we got. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, what was left over that still leaves us where we could apply. We're still at a place where we can apply that towards the principal of the general obligation that we're going to be looking at um, for mm -hmm. um, Rainbow and Max. That's and it's going to ask so about. we would still be able to apply that towards principal, so we can pay it down before we are on the right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, okay. so those are kind of our thoughts, you know, any questions you have, anything from staff that we missed on your behalf, you apologize for not catching that on your We got this question for you. Yeah. And we've got the worksheets, so we'll fix it. We need anything more to add. I mean, I know we went through that kind of fast. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to either Lee or I. If something pops in, you kind of look at us a little more. Mm -hmm. Feel free to call or email either one of us, both of us. And get you the answers as soon as you can. So again, just as you stated, what we'll do is I'll um, build this portion of the budget as we present it, and then it will be placed before you when we get to the budget approval, because uh, we have the business activity next. And um, because with local option sales tax, it is what it is. It's whatever road use tax uh, revenues are what they are. Um, but we present the expenses for the for the department and then you know from in capital improvements. Um again we have a CIP for street improvements that will bring into that that was approved. Um and then probably next pieces is again just our business activity with our utilities. So sure I mean, for those departments to kind of make sure we got their stuff in place and maybe we were looking to maybe do something out of the eight. Yes. And that'll be discussed next week. That's kind of what we're hoping to try to have in that next phase around March. Because we got to have this done by the end of March. So. And we're still, and, and have, did you hear back from Jim yet? On no, I'm not. 
I'm gonna have to call them. We're kind of hoping that we can have like our district rate study and our current rate study more because they know we've got everything that we each and we needed to finish up. That's the honest to just study one. Yeah, I can't see them tomorrow. And then um, and we should be. Yeah. Sometimes it's just kind of nice to know those things before you uh, go into purchases and equipment. It looks like there's plenty of food, so please help yourself this morning. <laughs> we'll stay as long as you want to answer any questions. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Any questions? Anybody need anything? And I just say, any of the department heads or anyone. So if you have questions or something that you'd like to see changed, um, just reach out to the city manager and he'll make a note um, and then he'll get with me and we'll go over whatever notes or um, changes or um, if you need more information, more details on things, then just get with him and he'll, he'll bring that so we can put it together for you. So thank you. All right, we're done. Great. <laughs>